you're judging me. You ever heard that phrase? Maybe you've said it yourself. It's the cry of the person who I think feels guilty, who thinks that their behavior is out of whack and knows that you know and you're looking at them funny and uh, is feeling a bit guilty. But they'll use the Bible for justification and they'll say, well, Jesus says, don't judge, don't judge. And we're going to see that passage today. And it really is a challenging thing that Jesus says. But what does he mean and has it been confused? Let's have a look in Barney's daily devotionals at Luke chapter 6. And we're picking up from verse 37 as Jesus continues his sermon on the plain, really challenging the world, overturning everything that uh, it has been taught and said in uh, in so many ways, not just in Judaism, but the way that people naturally want to be. We saw yesterday, to love your enemies. Who does that? Well, Jesus' followers. We're to be like our Heavenly Father. But he says this in Luke chapter 6 and verse 37. Do not judge, and you will not be judged. Do not condemn, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Give, and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over, will be poured into your lap. For with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. He also said, told them this parable. Can the blind man lead a blind man? Will they not both fall into a pit? A student is not above his teacher, but everyone who is fully trained will be like his teacher. Why do you look at the speck of sawdust in your brother's eye and pay no attention to the plank in your own eye? How can you say to your brother, Brother, let me take the speck out of your eye, when you yourself fail to see the plank in your own eye? You hypocrite, first take the plank out of your own eye, and you'll be able to see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye. Well, there's Jesus saying, Do not judge, we're not to judge. And so are we ever to be discerning or anything else? Are we ever allowed to correct, criticize, rebuke, admonish, help someone grow? Well, that's not what Jesus is saying, is it? He's talking about judging in a way that brings judgment on yourself. In fact, uh, it's a slightly hard thing to translate. Don't judge not that such that you will not be judged. And so, yes, we are to use judgment and we're to use it all the time, but we're not to judge in such a way that will bring God's judgment upon us. What are the kind of ways that God's judgment will come upon us? How do we judge in this wrong kind of way? And maybe we'll reflect a little bit on some of the other ways that maybe uh, Jesus isn't talking about. Well, he's talking about this kind of critical spirit of looking down on someone and condemning them and just writing them off. That's the kind of thing he's saying. He's also talking about the kind of judgment where you're nitpicking little things as he goes on with the plank in the eye and the speck in the eye. You can, there are people who are nitpickers who will just pick on anything, even though they can't see their own faults, their own problems, and that they need serious help themselves, but they're really quick to point out stuff. So the kind of judgments that Jesus is talking about are hypocritical, are... Uh, Uh, condemnatory, uh, write people off, and uh, it's all over Red Rover. And he's saying we're not to be that harsh kind of person. God is not that way, and we are not to be that way. But there are right kinds of judgments. In fact, he has some as he goes on. For the person who sees clearly, there are specks in others' eyes that we can see to pull out. And he says, but first... You have to be self-reflective, self-critical, look at humbly at who you are and, and be working on that. Pull the plank out of your own eye and then by all means help someone with their speck. He also talks about discernment. There's a right discernment as he goes on in tomorrow's passage about understanding that good fruit doesn't come from bad trees and the bad fruit doesn't come from good trees. And so there are right judgments. Or later he talks about um, uh, that there's um, a judgment that is coming. And, uh, and so we're to help people to understand it, we're to understand that ourselves. And so there's all sorts of ways all through the New Testament we are to be discerning about true and false teaching. I mean, it's COVID time and there's uh, time to watch anything and everything on the internet uh, someone was telling me yesterday they were watching Joel Osteen 
and I couldn't help but think uh, there's that that's not a great thing that's not a great thing because he's teaching a gospel other than the gospel that's being presented from the scriptures now that person wasn't necessarily listening in order to uh, learn and grow as a Christian but wanted to see what others are saying and that's not a terrible thing but um, you've got to listen with a very um, discerning ear especially to teachers who all speak words that sound kind of true but are not so what are we to talk about well so what are we to be like we are to be like people who are generous who are kind who are consistently patient with others that's that's what jesus is saying that's how to not judge in a way that will bring you under judgment it's to be the person who is trustworthy and loving will be a good ear uh, and will not uh, use that later uh, against the person and so some questions to reflect on this morning do you have the kind of critical spirit that jesus is warning against and teaching against and if so what can you do to work on it how do you turn that into a, a thankfulness of heart and a generosity of spirit it's good to be a critical thinker but it's not to be a, a, a good to be a criticizer, someone who puts people down and writes them off. God can change hearts. In fact, he calls, he's changing us and he's calling us to, to help our brothers and sisters and those around us uh, in, the right ways, in the right ways to see uh, how they can grow. But you know, you don't, he's t- warning us not to be that person who's always putting ourselves out ahead saying you know look at us how great we are and and using our criticism of others in order to puff ourselves up that's the wrong kind of judgment that jesus is really against a second question to reflect on is are there planks in our own eyes that we should be looking at and maybe having a look in the mirror of god's word and and working on and how are we going to work on them once you've identified don't just leave it there but start to do something about it. Uh, James warns that it's a fool that looks in the mirror and hears God's word and, and doesn't do something about it. When we know there are things to change, we need to change them. Whether it's to do with having this critical spirit or, or any other kind of matter, we've got to be able to work on it, push forward, grow. Uh, that is what God is working in us to do. And we want to uh, respond to his grace, respond to his greatness, and, uh, and be growing as his people. So what, what logs might be there in your own eye? Uh, another question, are you like a blind man being led by a blind man? Or worse, a blind man leading a blind man into uh, all kinds of nonsense and strange things? No, we're to grow to be like our teacher. We want to listen to the master and have that open heart to what he teaches that we might be rebuked by him, we might be corrected by him, we might be trained by him in all righteousness so we can be like him and not fall under judgment. That's why he's warning about this. Those who live otherwise fall under the judgment. And so judge not such that you will be judged. Right? It's not saying never judge, don't judge, but don't judge in that way that will bring you under judgment. Be discerning, uh, be wise, uh, be helpful to other people, don't build yourself up. Let's pray. Father, thank you for these challenging words of Jesus that we've been looking at this morning. And we pray that we would be not those who judge in a wrong way. Uh, please take away from us. Uh, the the critical spirit that uh, just wants to point out faults take away from us that blindness to our own sins and failings and take away from us that that uh, lack of desire when we do see them to change we pray please that you would make us those who glorify you in everything uh, who reflect your character help us to be loving of others. And when we do see problems, when we are discerning, when we hear false teaching that is leading people astray or even ourselves astray, help us to judge rightly 
uh, help us to understand and, and, and appreciate things from the point of view of your word and help us then to know what to do about it, uh, how to move forward, how to distance ourselves from it, how to help someone else who uh, is falling afoul of sin or false lies. We pray, please, that you'll help us to do that in a way that's not going to bring our, us under judgment, but in a way that is beneficial to them, that glorifies you, that is loving and kind. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, God bless everyone. I'll see you tomorrow.